Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to make a tooltip in Unity. We're going to make sure our tooltip never leaves the screen and is always on top. Let's begin. Okay, so this is the tooltip we created in the previous video. As you can see, it shows up when I pass the mouse over a button and the background correctly scales to fit whatever text I give it. Now, one way issue we have is if we have a button right next to the side of the screen. So with the window right at the edge of the screen, if I pass the mouse over and I move to the right, and as you can see, the text is now hidden and we can't really read it. So let's solve that problem. So here in the code, the code that moves our tooltip is up here on the update. We are calculating a local point using the rec transform utility to convert our mouse position into a position inside our canvas. Now there are two ways we can validate our position. We can try to validate the screen position before converting it, so we would modify the input.mouse position, or we can correct the anchored position after we actually place it on the normal position. We're going to correct it afterwards, since that way we no longer need to worry about screen space conversions and the code will be easier to follow. So first, let's grab the new anchored position, so a vector2 for a anchored position. And we're going to grab it from the transform.get component, type right transform, and grab the anchored position. All right, so we now have a nice vector2 position that contains the exact position following the mouse. So in here, we need to test if we're going past the right side of the screen. So we test if our anchored position.x plus the size of our background. So we, up there, we have the background rect transform. So we get the rect.width. So this position will be the position of the mouse plus the background size. So if this one is bigger than the width of our canvas. So up here we need a serialized field for a private rect transform for our canvas rect transform. Using our canvas rect transform, we can access the rect.width. So if our X position plus the width of our background is bigger than the canvas width, then we have gone past the edge of our screen. So we simply reset the anchored position.x to be on the width minus the size of our background. And that way it is exactly hugging the right side. And finally, we simply do a transform get component of our rect transform and set the anchored position to be our anchored position. All right, so let's test. And okay, here I am with my tooltip. And if I pass over and I move to the right, and yep, there you go, once it gets there, it no longer hides behind the screen and it now correctly locates in order to make sure that tooltip is always able to be read. Now, just a little note here, the calculation to see if we have gone past the screen. In the case that we are using in here, we are testing the X plus the width is bigger than the canvas rect transform dot width. And the reason we can do this is because we have anchored to the left position. If we were anchoring to the middle, then it would be rectal width divided by two. So in order to keep things simple, we simply anchor it to the left side and that way it goes from zero to canvas now width. All right, so now that we are correctly not hiding the tooltip on the X axis, let's make sure it also doesn't leave on the Y axis. So in here we do very much the same thing, except instead of the X, we modify the Y, instead of the width, we modify the height. So here I have shifted the window to the corners and I have given three lines to the attack. So let's see. And yep, there you go. It has three lines and normally they would all go past the height, but right now they are correctly staying inside the screen. So if I move the attack damage to the right, you can see it doesn't leave to the right side and it also doesn't leave up. All right. So our tooltip no longer goes past either edge of our screen. That way it is always readable and visible. Now, one small issue we still have with our tooltip is with regards to the sorting order. Right now, it all works correctly and the tooltip is on top. However, if we were to instantiate another window in runtime, so I can simulate it by simply pausing and duplicate the window. And as you can see, I've got the window on top of the tooltip. And right now, let's shift this window a little bit to the right. And just like that, this is the window on top. And if I pass the mouse button, and yep, there it is, the tooltip is now hidden by the second window. The UI sorting order is based on hierarchy, so when you instantiate something in runtime, it automatically places it as the last sibling, so in this case, it ends up on top of the tooltip. So let's fix that by making sure the tooltip is always the last sibling. So over here, we go to the show tooltip function. I have the game object in here. So in here, all we need to do in order to set the tooltip on top is simply do a transform.set as last sibling. This will put it as the last sibling within the same parent. So right now in here, let's 
first duplicate this window and as you can see the tone tip is not on top so let's put this and a window a bit on the right as you can see by default in the editor our tone tip is hidden behind this window however when we run the code pass over that one and there you go it is on top of both of them so I can now pass and see that that button that is almost hidden is the Patron button. And as you can see, I can also pause it and here duplicate the window. And as you can see, the tooltip is now no longer on top. So I pause it, but when I run the show code, it automatically sets as the last sibling. So it is always visible and always on top. So there you have it. We took our tooltip and made sure it never leaves the screen and is always on top. In the next video, we're going to polish up our tooltip by adding various functions in order to update the text or do a small animation. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.